Hello folks, in this video we're going to be working on this Husqvarna 130BT uh, backpack leaf blower I picked up. So me and my brother bought this for the very low price of $10. And you can pretty quickly see why. It's got, the lighting's going to be horrible, but it's got no carburetor, no air filter base or assembly, and no gas tank. In it, it, the people who I got it from also forgot the to to bring the pipe the extension with it so I'm gonna pick that up hopefully shortly but that's not important to the running of this but everything else back here is so yeah it's missing a lot and it's gonna take a lot of work I'm gonna have to buy a lot of parts for this but it's gonna be pretty cool and it definitely has compression I think it's a good engine because it has a ton of compression uh, here, let me show you. If you try to pull it over slowly, you can just feel it. It's like it's really hard. Uh, that also might be the ratio that this um, recoil start is. can cause it to feel harder to pull or easier. So, unfortunately I can't give this a compression test because the spark plug is way too small for my compression tester, so instead I just felt it and it felt, well, very good, so I'm not too concerned. Also, the person said they didn't use this very much. It mostly sat. It was only used for like a couple, like two seasons or something. So my guess, and I guess they parted it out. I don't know why, but yeah, it looks like it's been sitting outside or somewhere for a little bit because there's a little bit of sun damage on some of the plastic, but it looks in good condition other than the missing parts so we've been organizing the garage we got all the cars out and I know this isn't very important to this video but I got my wrenches got one misplaced there but I have them on the wall and it's so much better now because I can instead of having to roll the thing out on the floor I can I can actually access them nice and easy and so before there's still some stuff we need to burn some boxes over there but it's getting better because we don't have enough space for what we have exactly, but organization is key. So, hmm, let's let's take off some of these covers. There she is. So. I just recently did a video on that Echo PB200 uh, leaf blower that I got, and that's a 21cc engine. This is a 29.5, so it's basically a 30cc engine. So that may not sound like much, but it is quite a bit more powerful. You can see our screen is very clear. Take this whole muffler. I don't know why they always include so much excess gasket material. Like I see this a lot on intake gaskets as well. They leave like a ton of extra. My only guess is that that's if it breaks like the gasket gets damaged, you can actually make a new one out of the gasket material they provide, which is actually pretty cool. Because why else would you provide this much extra material just hanging off the bottom? So I took off the muffler just so I could get a look at the piston and the rings and see what kind of condition they're in. Because that'll tell you a lot about how the engine, how much wear the engine has on it. So you can see the piston in there. And you can see the rings in there. They look very good. I don't see much carbon buildup and I don't see much of any scuffing really at all. The PB200 looked actually quite a bit worse. So yeah, I'm not gonna tear this engine any further down because I think, it, I think everything's working just fine in there. The rings look like they're probably free because I don't see much of any carbon buildup.
Oh, oh, oh. Two strokes without exhaust is crazy loud. <clears throat> and I don't think I'm going to do it. Alright, so the spark plug, it looks good, although it looks like it's a little bit white on the tip, on the strap. A little bit whiter than maybe I would like, but I don't know what the carburetor situation was that was with this, and since we're going to be getting a brand new carburetor, obviously I'm going to be tuning it, so this is not really an issue at all. Besides, it doesn't look bad. Alright, so I got it out here, and I think I'm going to try to clean it off a little bit, but first I need to tape up the intake, because you do not want water getting into the crankcase. some WD-40 into the into the intake to displace any water that got in there. All right, so it's been a couple of weeks and we're back working on this project because I've got parts in. So of course, there's so many parts missing that it's, you, you have to buy a lot of stuff. And so I, at first I ordered the wrong carburetor. It was just too big. It was the wrong size. And it said it was for this mo this um, not mo this leaf blower, but it definitely didn't fit. But this one does, so far anyways. So I have the throttle cable hooked up. And you can see it would go right here. And you can see that that does put a pretty extreme angle on our throttle cable. But it was even worse all from the factory. This plate was bent at a 90 degree angle here, so it just came straight out. And so I actually bent it down a little bit, so it wasn't quite as much of a kink. And the throttle still pulls just fine, but, you know, that's not super ideal of an angle. It'd be better if it was like this or something. But I think this will work. So I also managed to find a used uh, air filter base on eBay for like 12 bucks, which is super hard to find these because I doubt they're manufactured anymore. And if you if you can find them, they're really expensive. But this one was pretty cheap. And you can tell it was used because, I mean, there's some sun damage on the choke. But the choke does work. And it should work just fine. So let's get this bolted up. Have not got the gas tank yet. That's going to be the most pricey part. I'm looking at probably like 50 bucks without shipping. Okay, so we got the gasket on and everything, and it's ready to get screwed, screwed in. It does work. It's maybe a little bit on the stiffer side, but it definitely still works. And choke. Okay. So obviously I don't have the air filter, and I also don't have the cover yet for this. Because that, that said it's going to take a long time to come. It came with plenty of extra fuel line, and also a spark plug and of course fuel filter so that's good I don't have to order that stuff alright so I have a very temporary fuel tank uh, in place right now and I have some I actually this was the fuel tank from the Echo PB200 that's why I said it's very temporary but <clears throat> basically 
I the new fuel lines that came since there was so much extra, I was able to replace these lines because the old ones were falling apart anyways. And so now we can put them on. So I think this is the main fuel line. And then I think this one is the return line back to the tank. We'll know in a minute when we prime it here. Alright, so we'll prime it and see if it... Oh yeah, it's sucking it up. Primer bulb is full. And the question is, now will it crank up? Put the choke on. Uh, tuned or anything. Got a bunch of tools laying on the floor. So that's good. Like Need to tie that thing down. What? It's like oh yes. See it? What happens? Yeah, yeah, there's only one field thing. bad not bad well we heard it run Let's see if the kill switch works nice okay so obviously that's a temporary fuel tank but that definitely works it runs the carb works that's great all right so it's the next day and yesterday I was running it a little more and it wasn't running quite right. It idled fine, but when you'd rev it up, it bogged down like it wasn't getting the correct mixture. And I, it kind of sounded like it was running lean, and I checked the spark plug, and sure enough, it was quite white. And so the problem is, is I didn't think these carburetors had any adjustment on them whatsoever for mixture. I mean, there's an idle adjustment right here, but that's it. But then I did some research, and I found, I think there's a little adjuster screw in the center of this throttle valve and uh, it's like a little it had a little plastic cap on it but hopefully that'll do what we need to make it run right because I was getting really discouraged yesterday because it wasn't running right at all and I don't know this is like the only carburetor I could find or the previous one I bought didn't work at all and this one if it doesn't work either that's a problem Okay, so I think it'll fit this 
this one here. I'll angle exhaust outside because. So the thing is that, that that adjustment is for both the high and the low. So you, if you adjust it so it runs really good at high throttle, then it idles kind of bad. And if you adjust it so it idles really good, then it doesn't run on full throttle very good at all. So it's not ideal. There really should be two adjustment screws, but there's not. But I think I got it in somewhat of a happy medium to where it idles okay. And really you want to tune it most for full throttle because that's where it's going to be used, obviously. So I'm probably going to run it, run it quite a bit and then check the spark plug and see how it looks. <clears throat> and of course this is still a temporary fuel tank, but that won't, that won't affect how it runs. That'll... So that's okay. Alright, well we ran it for a few minutes on mostly full throttle. So that'll give us a reading of how our high high mixture is, how it's running. My guess is it's still running kind of lean because it wasn't running very good. It still would bog some. Definitely better than it was though. So I'm impatient. I don't want to wait for it to cool down so I'll just use gloves. Yeah, okay. So that's what I thought. You can see the strap is very white. And so yeah, that's definitely running lean. I'm sure this camera doesn't show it basically at all, but uh, that is definitely lean. Straps white and the base electrode is also very white. So yeah, uh, usually screwing out is richening. So I'm going to uh, see if I can richen it up some, which makes it idle more poorly. But you know, I'd rather have it I'd rather have it run poorly at idle than poorly at high throttle. If worse comes to worse, I can try to drill out the main jet in this, and then that'll give us uh, more fuel at the high range, and then you can tune this screw for the lower range. bunch but that seemed to make it worse it seemed no matter how much I was backing out the screw 
which is supposed to add more fuel, it wouldn't make the high end any richer. So it just would still bog no matter what, and it just made it idle really poorly. So it seems that I can get the high to run okay, uh, but then the low is completely garbage, like it won't idle at all. Uh, so that's not good. <clears throat> Alright, so I've tore down the carburetor, and so we have of course the, this was the, the different diaphragms and stuff, but yeah, it seems to not run good at full throttle and run too lean no matter what, even when I open it up a lot. <clears throat> so maybe I can drill out the jet. Now, I don't, I don't know much about two-stroke carburetors, so I think that this little guy right there is the main jet because you can follow the fuel here. So this is the main fuel inlet at the bottom of the carburetor. And it goes uh, through this inlet screen, around, so through this inlet screen, and then that's right on there, so around this little passage, back through this hole, I think, and then down into this section, where this needle valve actually meters how much fuel goes in with this pumping diaphragm here. And then from there it goes back, I guess, behind that little hole, and... <clears throat> Then that goes through here, the center cross-shaped piece. And then that then is directly on top of this piece, which has a tiny, tiny little hole in it. And I think that is, if you would even call it the main jet, but that's the passage that lets, that lets the, determines how much fuel can get through, no matter how much you adjust the screw out. And you can see it is a truly tiny hole. I mean, here, I'll hold it up to the light. I'm sure you can't see anything on camera, but there's a tiny, tiny little pinhole that goes through the center of that piece. And I think that that is, if we were to, uh, like, slightly, slightly, slightly enlarge in that hole, it would let in more fuel for mainly the top end. And I have done this before with four-stroke carburetors, which are a lot easier to work on, but, you know, just drill out the main jet just a little bit, and it will increase your fuel flow at the high end of the, when it's running on full throttle. And so if it's running lean, that'll richen it up. Because I checked the spark plug again, and it's definitely still running very lean. Still quite white. So, I don't know... It's a bit, it's irreversible, of course, if I mess with this, but, I mean, if it doesn't run good, you might as well try what you can, but I don't know. What do you think I should do? I'm sure someone knows if this is actually the main jet, and or uh, if it's even called that, and if drilling this out slightly would fix this issue, make it run a little richer at the high end, because when I'm messing with the screw, uh, when I'm turning it out a ton, it doesn't really run, it doesn't seem to richen it up much on the high end. I think this is mostly a low end screw for the mixtures, which, you know, so you fine tune it for that, but then there's no high end screw, so it just runs too lean all the time, which is not good because the engine gets really hot and you can definitely destroy an engine pretty quickly if it's running too lean. Because I could tell, it's just the air being blown over the fins was super hot and the engine got really hot really fast, which isn't ideal. I have these tiny torch tip cleaners, and so what you do is, I don't even know if my smallest one's going to fit in there. The answer is no. So it's so tiny of a hole that my smallest torch tip cleaner doesn't even fit in the end of it. So I guess that'll be it for this video. If you have any input 
on what you think I should do to remedy this issue. Uh, I would appreciate if you would share it in the comment section. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. such a dumb thing. It's fine. It's already... It's not gonna hurt it, really. But it's probably not that good for it. But, yep, she produces a little bit of thrust.